Starts at 12. The 6 o'clock news starts right now. And we begin with late breaking news out of Austin concerning the bill that would have set the rules for how teachers could talk about current events and racism in American history. The Texas Tribune and other sources reporting that the bill, the bill appears to be dead in the water due to a procedural technicality. House Bill 3979 is a bill that was opposed by teachers, education advocacy groups and others. As we have reported, that bill said teachers could not be compelled to take up current events in class. It appeared conservative lawmakers had it well on its way to the governor's desk, but again, late this afternoon, a last minute procedural technicality appears to have stopped that effort. Some clouds, some sun, lots of humidity and heat. It hasn't amounted to much in the rain department so far, but showers are popping up around the viewing area. Adam Kasky with a quick look at the forecast as we head into the heart of the holiday weekend. Adam. Well, and Steve, normally it's not a Memorial Day weekend here on San Antonio and South Texas without some showers and thunderstorms, and it looks like most of that activity would be this evening. Okay, so let's take a look at the radar right now. You look at the action, it's over in Mexico, parts of West Texas, and especially just to the north of us and our scattered Thunderstorm activity is likely through the about midnight and even maybe an hour or two thereafter. But you look off to the north, that's where we're getting most of the development. And what the indications are is that some of this could organize and come together and then drop southward and affect our case at 12 viewing area. This does have a history of some severe weather. And of course, we can't rule out severe weather. A lot of lightning, very electrified. These storms are the closest one is heading toward junction right now about to hit I-10 there, uh, northwest of San Antonio. We've had some development elsewhere. You look in Kerr County near Center Point, with a downpour flare up, clipped comfort as well, and a few of them in Bandera County. A little bit of activity out ahead of it, but what we're really relying upon is that action to the north organizing and in the coming hours dropping southward. We're also, also keeping an eye in the mountains of Mexico, that activity, should it come together, could affect parts of Alverde County, but we're thinking more so West Texas action possibly dropping in later on tonight. So we've got that 40% chance scattered in nature through midnight, and again, maybe an hour or two thereafter. Otherwise, we'll just have partly to mostly cloudy conditions, temperatures falling through the 70s. We're going to talk more about the weekend weather and especially those rain chances coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Adam. Five city council seats will be decided in next week's runoff election. Candidates making a big push to get their message to voters. But are things getting ugly in City Council District 2? Both incumbent Jada Andrew Sullivan and Jalen McKee Rodriguez are getting endorsements. And now some alleged comments regarding sexuality are making the race even more heated. Garrett Berger explains how it's impacting these campaigns. Let's bow our heads, everyone. Father. Gathered outside an early voting center today, a group of pastors gave their support to the District 2 candidate they say has already been providing, quote, exceptional leadership and management. We must map out a plan. We must execute that plan. And the plan is to give Jada Andrew Sullivan our personal support. But her opponent and former staff member, Jalen McKee Rodriguez, has his own endorsements from groups like the Texas Organizing Project and high profile figures like the Castro Brothers. His team believes their message is resonating. What we do know is the people that the constituents that we have been talking to are more focused on the issues. But it's not just endorsements heating up the race. Mickey Rodriguez, who is gay, tweeted earlier this week that, quote, there are pastors and church leaders telling their congregants that a vote for me is a sin. Those who are watching, who look to me as a role model, who look at me and see someone breaking a barrier, if I was silent right now, what does that tell them? when they're facing adversity, when they're being challenged. Earlier this week, McKee Rodriguez pointed to Pastor Jonathan Ellis as the person behind that divisive message, something Ellis vehemently denied in a Facebook video. McKee Rodriguez claims another pastor, Patrick Jones, made homophobic comments about him. Jones also made a video saying his issue isn't with McKee Rodriguez's, quote, lifestyle, but that he had, quote, no footprints across our community. Both pastors attended today's endorsement event for Andrew Sullivan. The councilwoman, whom McKee Rodriguez also called out in the tweet for enabling that rhetoric and behavior declined to address that directly. Our community deserves positivity. Our community deserves uplifting. Our community deserves to be a part of the conversation and not to have negativity. In District 2, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News.
To our news now, what was a missing person case in San Antonio is now a murder. At least that's what a Southwest Louisiana sheriff is saying after a grisly discovery there. He says a severed head found in Cameron Parish has been positively identified as that of a woman reported missing here. Katrina Weber tells us why it may be up to the San Antonio homicide detectives to solve this case. With one discovery, questions in two states have been answered. San Antonio police had made a plea three years ago for information about 58 year old Sally Hines, who disappeared from the city's northwest side. This week, they have answers by way of a different investigation in Louisiana. Nothing come up positive until this lead right here. Cameron Parish Sheriff Ron Johnson says dental records helped his detectives close the case on a severed human head found there, showing it belonged to Hines. This was a murder for sure. There was no uh, accident involved. Johnson says jail trustees picking up litter found the head in a plastic bag in a marshy area where bodies have been dumped before. They believe that these gators here, that we have a abundant supply of gators, will come meet these bodies or these body parts. Louisiana authorities cracked this case with help from a tipster who saw a recreation of the head and matched it to Heinz photos. Test later confirmed it was her. As it turns out, the whole time San Antonio police were looking for Hines, authorities in Louisiana were looking for answers. Johnson says they actually found the head back in 2018, about a month after SAPD announced that Hines was missing. As far as we know, we have no record of her being here. Johnson says it's possible she may have been killed in San Antonio. He says he plans to work with SAPD in whatever way he can. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio police making an arrest in connection with a deadly hit and run on the northeast side. 45-year-old Raybert Diaz is charged with failure to stop and render aid. According to investigators, Diaz hit and killed 63-year-old John Edward Carney along Perrin Bidal Road on Tuesday. Officers say they linked the suspect to the crime after looking at surveillance video from a nearby business and examining evidence left at the scene, which included debris from his car. Arrest paperwork states that Diaz told police his car was damaged because he hit a deer. Well, that did not fly with officers. They say the damage done to his car did not back up that claim. Have big plans for the weekend? Well, Memorial Day weekend travel expected to be at pre-pandemic levels and more law enforcement will be on the roads as well. The annual Click It or Ticket campaign underway, checking for drivers who aren't buckled up. Our Samuel King joins us live now. Samuel, this campaign taking on an added urgency this year. You see, that's because there were more people last year who died in crashes while not wearing seatbelts than in 2019, even though there were fewer cars on the roads last year. Law enforcement is going to be out in force this weekend looking for people not wearing seatbelts or do not have their children properly restrained in child seats. Now, TechStot says here in San Antonio last year, there were 63 traffic crashes in which people suffered fatal or serious injuries. Those crashes were resulted in 21 deaths and 47 people with serious injuries. So TechStot's Laura Lopez says the Click It or Ticket campaign is all about safety and awareness. Our number one priority is safety, and we want to make sure that drivers have make that their priority as well. And in Texas, drivers and passengers are required to wear seatbelts. If you're caught without one, you could face a $200 fine. Now, all children under eight years old must be in a child safety or booster seat unless they're taller than five, four feet, excuse me, four feet, nine inches. The fine there is $250. Now, TechStop launched this campaign back in 2002, and they said it has made a difference in increasing seatbelt usage from 78% to more than 90% last year. But uh, this year's campaign does run through June 6. Live in San Antonio, Samuel King, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Samuel. And speaking of the roadways, let's take a live, live look outside with our trans guide cameras right now. This one showing us the picture at I-10 and I-35. If you've been out on the roadways this afternoon, well, you can you know then it is heavy. Again, I-10 and I-35 this evening where uh, traffic does indeed look heavy.
Military families all over San Antonio are getting a new supply of books. This is all thanks to a book donation in partnership with Operation Homefront and Gun Gives. Back in April, 25,000 books were collected to give to military families across the U.S. and overseas. Here locally, 10,000 books were given to families in San Antonio. This is really important, I feel, especially now, to give a little extra love to our families, show appreciation, and giving, you know, the knowledge of books. We really feel it's important that you support the military. This is Military City USA, and if we don't support the military, we have a problem here. Other places to receive books were Travis Air Force Base, Fort Bliss, those stationed in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Korea, just to name a few. A lot of people with big plans this weekend. I have a daughter graduating on Sunday, oh, so I'm very goodness. excited. We have uh, family coming in, and I, they call. You know, we have some that are traveling down from Dallas. They were in the middle of a downpour oh, yeah. on their drive down. Yeah, I-35, especially closer to Waco, yeah. and even Dallas last night and earlier this morning, I-35, north of San Antonio, and even now, we've got some downpours out there. Today, temperature-wise, we made it up to 88 for the high temperature. Right now, we're well into the 80s for most of us. A little cooler in Kerrville, 79, along with Lost Maples, but 90 in Castroville, 86 in Seguin, 87 officially at the airport in San Antonio. We'll gradually fall into the 70s this evening by 10 o'clock, mid-70s. The key is some scattered showers and thunderstorms developing, especially in the hill country and then dropping southward. And right now you see the activity on the radar screen. It's all around us, just not over us at the moment. We're going to talk more about this and our storm potential into the weekend in just a few minutes. You've always had such a giving spirit and an incredible attitude and you treat others with kindness. And something I will never forget is the fact that you called me when I was away from the station for a month when I had Bell's palsy. You called to check on me. And I remember seeing Paul Venema on my phone and you just wanted to say hi, ask how I was, share a kind word, and to know that you and your wife had me on your mind and just wanted to wish me well meant the world and it's been a reminder to me that when somebody else is going through a tough time just how meaningful it is to reach out so thanks so much for being an example to all of us in so many ways and for all the really good jokes i wish you well in your retirement it is well deserved we're gonna miss you so much there will never be another paul venema thanks for everything A new exhibit at the Witty may have you and the kiddos walking away with some cool new facts about critters you didn't even know existed. If you're okay with squirming a bit. As Alicia Barrera learned, one creature can survive everything from dehydration to space radiation. Well, we'd need superpowers to live with no sunlight, function in very extreme temperatures, or be able to hold your breath for more than just a few seconds. But did you know that out there in the world, there are actually creatures who do this on a daily? Well, come learn more at the Witty's new exhibit. Extreme Creatures Life at the Limits is all about the natural world and the power of natural selection. While human bodies can't withstand extreme situation, this exhibit highlights the creatures living in those harsh environments. Take the tardigrade, for example. At the Witty, you can see the larger than life model, but they're actually a microscopic animal that according to experts can survive dehydration, extreme temperatures, even space radiation, and would survive the space vacuum, which means extreme oxygen deprivation. Not impressed? Well, what about locomotion that surpasses human technologies? Little dragonflies put a helicopter to shame. Did you know they can hover without moving and fly upside down and backwards? And you'll definitely want to check out what the mimic octopus does. It truly lives lives up to its name. The exhibit includes life-size models and interactive areas to give curious minds a better idea about just how strong, fast, and tolerant these creatures are and the importance of their existence here on Earth. Because when you walk in, you're, you're immersed immediately in sights, sounds, different things moving around. 
Um, we, we even have some smell interactives, which is not a, a usual thing in an exhibit, but um, I think all the senses are going to be touched. And, and a sense of wonder and awe. It opens tomorrow and tickets to Extreme Creatures exhibit are $5 plus admission. Reporting from the Witty, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. We've got some breaking news I want to take you to right now with time saver traffic. This is loop 410 at McCullough. You can see a major accident there. These are the westbound lanes actually not far from the 281 overpass. Again, 410 at McCullough. You can see at least three lanes are blocked right now. You can see the massive traffic backup further up, but you can see both fire, police and EMS are on the scene. All three. It's at loop 410 and McCullough will continue to monitor this situation. Well, turning now to weather 87 degrees out there right now. The long Memorial Day weekend is finally upon us, Adam. And so often Memorial Day weekend here yes. equates to thunderstorms, right? Yes. And I think that storm potential is mostly here on the front end this evening. That's when we have the highest storm potential through tonight, probably about midnight or so. And then a few weekend rain chances even into Memorial Day, but we're not talking a washout or anything widespread. Also, another key for this upcoming holiday weekend, humid but not too hot. The stickiness isn't going anywhere, but actually high temperatures will be a little below average. Here's a look at the severe thunderstorm watch, which is which does include some of our western counties, Valverde County, Edwards County, then you get farther to the north and basically out of our viewing area. And this is until about 11 p.m. Those are the locations where they're most likely to see severe thunderstorms. That doesn't mean we're going to miss out on thunderstorms even around here. Oh, we just have an update. Yeah. Katie's giving me an update. They just expanded it. OK, oh, there it is. Yep. So they just expanded the watch. There we go up to the second info for you. They just expanded that watch as we're saying at five it, that could be expanded southward. There we go. It got expanded southward. So now even San Antonio is included within the severe thunderstorm watch. Remember, the watch means we're watching for those severe thunderstorms because the ingredients are there. We just have to wait for them to get mixed together to give us the severe weather. The warning means it's happening and we've had plenty of warnings off to the north of us, especially now is city of Austin and Travis County. There a severe thunderstorm warning actually in San Saba County earlier, just a couple of hours ago, they had tennis ball size hail with one of those thunderstorms. So the anticipation is these storms off to the north of us now hitting Junction in Kimball County. This coming together and actually organizing more and then uh, making basically a complex that would drop southward and hit San Antonio in the coming hours. Anywhere from about 8 o'clock to about 11 o'clock would probably be our time frame. This model shows 8 o'clock maybe a little premature on that. Nonetheless, it's that more organized activity that comes together and then pushes south and even off to the west. Those of you in Del Rio, Valverde County, Edward, Edwards County, we're also watching activity in West Texas that could come your way. So we're keeping an eye on a few different directions here and seeing how those storms evolve and develop this evening. And then it turns into a now casting situation. So we'll keep you updated, especially we'll be around on the night beat and on the KSAT Weather Authority app streaming live when need be for you right here from the studio, right in the palm of your hand, wherever you are. Muggy, look at this, look at the dew points. Low to mid 70s, very sticky air. That Gulf air is in place and it's really not going anywhere anytime soon. It's going to be here through the weekend. Temperatures, well, 87 in town and Hondo, 91 Carrizo Spring. Nothing outrageous temperature wise, and that's going to be the theme all the way through the weekend. Tomorrow, mid 80s, we'll be in the low to mid 80s for afternoon highs through Memorial Day. A few sprinkles tomorrow morning. Morning events should be fine. Low clouds, an isolated pop up sprinkle or two and into the afternoon. Outdoor activity should be OK. Generally speaking, this three day weekend should be OK. It's just these few isolated chances here and there. Widely separated Saturday afternoon and then again Memorial Day afternoon and evening. Humid, not too hot. We get into next week back to work on Tuesday for folks. That's when our rain and storm chances actually elevate a bit more. So Tuesday and Wednesday we are expecting a bit of a messy weather pattern to set up and enhanced shower and thunderstorm chances at that time. All right, thank you Adam. All right, so the Texans, there's one subject they didn't really want to talk about today, Greg. <laughs> to say the least, it yeah. is Deshaun Watson. Hey, is he showing up for any of the Zoom meetings? Hey, is he going to be there? Don't even bother to ask. When we come back, we'll show you how it's uh, a sore subject would be the right way to put it. And not only is he switching teams, but this Dallas Cowboy is switching positions. Coming up. Hey, Coach.
Coach, I was just wondering, has Deshaun been at the facilities at all? And if not, have you heard from him or do you expect him to be there at all this offseason? Uh, we have nothing more to say. We've we've talked about the Deshaun, Deshaun situation with uh, Nick and I both and with Cal and nothing's new on that. So he has not been to the facility at all? Uh, I have nothing to say about that situation. To say Deshaun Watson is a sore subject for the Houston Texans would be an understatement in big board sports. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. No one wants to talk about Deshaun Watson and the Texans organization as organized team activities open this week without their star quarterback. Watson has made it clear he wants nothing more to do with this organization after they ignored his suggestions for a new general manager. However, the Texans' ability to grant his trade request has been complicated by the fact that he is facing 22 civil lawsuits for sexual assault and misconduct. And his attorney, Rusty Harden, says Watson can't even be disposed in those lawsuits until after February 22, 2022. Not to mention the NFL's own investigation that is ongoing. So if you listen to the Texans new head coach David Culley, it sounds as if Houston is planning on kicking off their 2021 season without him, working on the quarterbacks they have in the OTAs that include Tyra Taylor, who they signed as a free agent and more than likely the starter in place of Watson or first draft pick Davis Mills out of Stanford. They're all getting reps. Everybody that we brought in here, we're repping them. I mean, they're, they're getting reps as if they're the guy. And, and, and again, I'm going to go back. All positions, it's been that way. So every quarterback that we've got in here that's working is is getting getting the reps, and that's what the off season's for, you know, to be able to find out. And 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 we're actually doing that right now, not just with that position, but with the other positions too. If there is one guy on the Texans who's good at adapting to different quarterbacks, it's Brandon Cooks. Cooks was clearly Watson's top target last season with 81 receptions for over 1,100 yards and six touchdowns. That was Brandon's fifth 1,000-yard season, even though Houston finished a dismal 4-12. and This will be Cooks' second season with the Texans, his fourth team in seven years. It included stops in New Orleans, where he caught passes from Drew Brees, also a time in New England with Tom Brady, and two seasons with the L.A. Rams and Jared Goff. For me, it don't matter who's throwing me the ball, you know, uh, I'm going to get on the same way, page with you uh, and, and figure out how you like things to be done and put my spin on it, and we're going to go out there and ball. And I think I've shown that time and time again over the years. And whatever the case is, I'm going to continue to show that. All right, after five seasons with the Atlanta Falcons, Keanu Neal signed a one-year deal with the Dallas Cowboys this offseason and has been reunited with Dan Quinn, who is now the new defensive coordinator in Dallas. Aside from changing teams, Neal is also changing positions from safety with the Falcons to the linebacker with the Cowboys. Does Neal see himself as a linebacker? I don't categorize myself, you know. I, I, um, I feel like I can play safety, linebacker. You know, wherever they plug me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out there and, and play and, and play at my best. So, uh, yeah, growing up, I played linebacker in middle school, high school, and then we changed the defense and I switched to, uh, to safety. So I went to college as a safety. But, you know, I, it, it, in my heart, I've, I've been a linebacker for a while. Uh, but, you know, as time went on, I moved to safety. Uh, so I, I, still have, I still have an understanding of what everything entails with, with playing linebacker. All right, good luck to him in that position. And we're just getting late word that they moved the Judson Softball Regional Championship game two up to six o'clock because they're trying to squeeze it in before all these storms hit later tonight. Mm, great. So I'll have that for you tonight. And coming up after the break. Yes. Our interview with the one and only Paul Venema. Awesome. We'll be right back. Greg's former intern. <laughs> <laughs> That testimony simply isn't credible, the defense argued. Paul Venema is known to many of you as the man who covers the courts. Whether it was the Bear County Courthouse, the Cadena Reeves Justice Center, or the federal courthouse, Paul was truly a fixture. He started out as an anchor at KSAT, handling weekend newscasts before moving to the 5, 6, and 10. But it was a love of the legal system that led him to the courts. Paul has covered some of the state's most high-profile cases. He covered the trials of Yolanda Saldivar, Selena's killer, Janine Jones, the killer nurse. Take a look at these bug shots taken by Colorado police after the four were arrested. And the escape, capture, and convictions and executions of most of the Texas Seven, the men who escaped from the state prison in Kennedy in 2000. Outside of the courtroom, Paul covered some of the biggest stories for KSAT. The big challenge and the thing that sets this project apart from anything else will be the roof. 
the birth of the Alamo Dome, the 1996 Democratic National Convention. What you can see behind me is giant plumes of thick black smoke that's been pouring from the compound for the past 10 minutes now. And Paul was there in 1993 when the Branch Davidian compound outside of Waco went up in flames. Many of you also know Paul for his years-long relationship with another legend, the one and only Willie Nelson. This is kind of a stroll on memory lane here. Isn't it? Paul and Willie's relationship goes back to the 70s. And before the pandemic, it wouldn't be out of the norm to hear Paul say that Willie invited him up to the ranch to do a story. He calls his ranch luck and likes to say when you're here, you're in luck. And when you're not here, you're out of luck. And as the story goes, all good things must come to an end. While Paul is putting away his reporter notebook, he'll still be around, spending more time with his wife, children, and beloved grandchildren. Sorry to see you go, my friend. Here's wishing you the very best. You deserve it. Prison spokesmen tell me they've already been contacted by Hollywood producers. In Teller County, Paul Venemuk. In Huntsville, Paul Venemuk. At Fort Hood, Paul Venemuk. In Luck, Paul Venema. KSAT 12 News. Oh my goodness, I'm oh, getting teary. I know. That. He is a master <laughs> storyteller, both on the air and maybe even more so <laughs> off the yes. air. The one and only Paul Venema joining us live now in studio. Paul, congratulations on your retirement. You know we do not want you to go, but we understand. <laughs> I mean, what a treat in this business, 47 years, it's been one a, place, and you get to choose when you leave. That's the beauty of it, isn't it? And that's, that was my choice. It, I decided, you know, at some point, perhaps we ought to put the brakes on, and there's something more to life than this, and I want to find out whether or not there is. Yeah. yeah. We saw so many of the different stories that you've covered yeah. throughout the career. From your perspective, looking back on these 47 years, which one stands out to you oh, the boy, most? Oh, boy, that is a challenge. You, you saw so yeah. many stories, yes. and that's, how do you break it down and single it up? I guess probably I can lump it in that the, the stories that meant so much to me are a couple of them, but the reason they did is the same, and that is they were stories like Janine Jones or like yeah. Waco, stories that I covered from the outset when they were still developing, and then followed them all the way through the system. I, from, uh, you know, as the story developed until there were people charged and we got to court. So it was kind of able to put a, a bow, if you will, on some of these stories, and that, that made a lot, a lot of sense to me and, and was very fulfilling. You made a lot lot of friends along the way too I, and I was blown away you know I, I, I posted from your party last night and just people talking about oh Paul interviewed me here oh I saw Paul in the courthouse one time there oh ask Paul about his fedoras oh ask Paul about this and that and the other thing I mean talk about the relationships that you know you made and fostered along the way you know what it's all about is the key to this whole thing is listening Okay, our business is people, and if people, if you're if you're genuinely interested in what you're doing, you're listening to people, and when you're listening to people, you be, you develop relationships, you develop trust, you develop friendships, and that's kind of the key to making it all work. Is just one simple word is listening. But to mention to you talked about people, I, I can't even begin to list the number of people that. I have uh, been impacted by, but whose lives I also would like to think I've impacted. When I, when I do, uh, we, we all do these career day stories right. at schools, and I would always leave the kids with one last thing. I would always tell them, look, please, whatever you do, make a difference. Now we're here, and I'd like to think I did. Oh, you definitely yeah. did. I we have so many people who want to wish you well. And earlier in the 5 o'clock newscast, we went to the courthouse and talked to oh some of the goodness. judges down there who wanted to wish you well. We also have the mayor who has a special message that he recorded just for this uh, special oh, occasion. Wow. Let's go ahead I, and roll that. I, oh. Hi, Paul. It's Mayor Ron Nuremberg. I wanted to wish you well and congratulations on an incredible 47-year career in broadcast journalism here in San Antonio. We are better for your work. I consider it one of the honors of my public career uh, to be interviewed by you. Uh, KSAT and our community are going to miss you on the air, uh, but we uh, think you deserve a great retirement. Happy trails, Paul. Wow, that is, that is impressive. Did you notice there's a little pollen in the air here right now? Yeah, I think, well, and that's the, that's the thing. I mean, and, and I even noticed when you signed off yesterday, when you yeah, said for was, the last time yeah, from the courthouse, yeah, Paul Venema, yeah. KSAT 12 News. I mean, I could tell that, that 
it was getting to you, the it, emotions. It, but you know what? The brain is a beautiful thing. You process it slowly. I'm sure when I drive out, out of the parking lot that it's going to hit me. But it's kind of processing slowly, you yes. know. And, and because there's, there's just so, so much to think about and so, so much to reflect on. And uh, you, you start to think, who, who are you going to thank? You know, because yeah. you mentioned people. I've been involved and met so many people. And so I started to think about that. And I realized, you know, there's only one place to start. People always say, you know, where do I begin thanking people? I know where to begin thanking people. I thank the Lord, you know, for yes. a, it's been a wonderful life, a wonderful career. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you mentioned Sonia. I mean, my wife and kids, it's just been, a, it, they've been, and you guys know this too, it's a challenge to run a family and survive in this business. And I've been blessed with people in my life that have made it work. And Absolutely. speaking of your family, tell us a little bit about your plans for retirement. I well, know that you and Sonia are cruisers. Do you have any yeah, cruises Well, we'd planned? like to thank, uh, the pandemic obviously is, yeah. not gonna, is gonna slow that down. But you know what I really wanna do is just decompress. Yes. You know, I mean, I, for 47 years, your life is deadlines, you know? And, yeah. and as much as I loved all this, I am gonna be really, really happy to start chasing grandkids instead of, instead of deadlines. Yes, know? absolutely. Uh, I wanna talk about your relationship with Willie Nelson. Okay. Where did that start? <laughs> It started at Floor's Country Store. I was doing a, a feature story on country music and so forth, and, and uh, his road manager at the time, a fellow by the name of Larry Trader, set it up for me, set up an interview with me, uh, with, with Willie. And so I got out there excited to do an interview with Willie, yeah. and he takes me back into the kitchen at Floor's Country Store. He said, is this place okay to do the interview? There's pots and pans, and it's clean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I said, is there anything better? And at the time, he, he said, well, just how's this, how will this work? And he opened the door, and there's a real nice den back there with animal heads on the wall and stuff yeah. and Willie was sitting there in the chair just cracking up you know they he, he had got me bad oh he thought you he, he yeah. set you up on that. he set that one up for me yeah speaking but, of Willie I believe we also have a recorded message from him if we could roll that one also oh my goodness you guys are uh, let's talk about you and I I've never come to you with an idea with a song to sing or anything is that is that kind of what makes our friendship work what what, what makes our friendship work yours and mine what Oh, I like him. He's a nice guy. He, you know, do, you do what you say you will do. If you're be here this third time, you're here. You got everybody who's a, you do your job well. And, uh, uh, great, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> That's you're a really nice guy. About always. your friendship. Yeah. Stay with us for one more segment. Got you. I know it's All the right. last thing you're doing at KSAT, <laughs> and we're keeping you here late, but Not stay nice. with us for one more second. We're taking sure, a quick sure. break. We'll be right back. Thanks. We are back with the one and only Paul Venema retiring from KSAT. This is the last official oh. thing he will do as a KSAT <laughs> right employee here, after 47 years. And I, I have to ask this question. You and Willie so close. <laughs> I know you at least got some secondhand smoke <laughs> in the whole thing. Did you and Willie ever share a joint? <laughs> You're really going to put me on the spot. <laughs> Let me ask you, have you known anybody who would turn down? A, well, a, that a, opportunity? A, yeah. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. But seriously, when, when I would interview Willie, when I first got to knowing him and we were do, get, became friends, we'd do an interview, and invariably, after every interview, he'd do one of these, look around, want to burn one? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'll leave it there. The yeah, offer, yeah, that's good. The offer that's good was enough. there, and you take it where you want to go with it. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, what would you do? <laughs> yeah, leave it in that. Leave it in that. You have John been such an inspiration to all of us here at the KSAT newsroom and you will leave such a legacy behind and we just want to say we love you we're going to miss you and this place will never be the same oh, yeah and, and and Paul you and I have worked closely together in Gerald you know many stories. Carla Faye Tucker execution I mean so many different ways and you are a true professional you're also a true friend and I appreciate it you're a rock star at the courthouse you're a rock star in the newsroom, and I wish you nothing but the best in retirement. Well, it feels so good as I know that's we coming from you. the heart, guys. It, it, it just, it just, I don't know what to say. I'm, well, how about a it, gift? It's, it's, a, it's a mutual thing. It's a mutual thing because we, we, we feed off each other, and that's, that's the beauty of our newsroom. You know, it, 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 they talk about us as a family, and that's the reality of it. Mm -hmm. And that's the challenge here now is it's hard to walk away from your family because I love you guys. And, you, you will know. always be family. Yeah. You will always have a place here. Yeah. And it's a tradition. You're retiring. We're going to oh, remain man. enshrined <laughs> on your porch now, okay? There you go. Uh, <laughs> so, Thermometer Thursday. This yeah. is for you, and it'll you bring back the good memories every time you take a look at it. And Thank it, you. It's accurate, too, of course. <laughs> and Paul, from you, it would be, I sure. Your legacy is secure. You have <laughs> made a difference, my friend. 
Thank you. We love Thank you. Thank you. I'm, we'll be right back. Here's a quick weather update. We've got a severe thunderstorm watch in effect for the really the vast majority of the case at 12 viewing area and this is actually until 2 a.m. It just updated. It's until 2 a.m. for the vast majority of our area and you see other parts of Texas in the same situation. They've already had severe storms elsewhere, especially where you see little orange polygons indicate the current severe thunderstorm warnings as close as Austin and Junction area. Uh, we've got the active weather out there. Now the anticipation is everything you see off to the north of us coming together and over the coming hours dropping southward. Right now it's slowly moving kind of to the southeast. We're expecting this area to fill in a bit. Oh, there's a new severe thunderstorm warning east of Fredericksburg in eastern Gillespie County and western Blanco County. That's for that cell that just popped up over the past 30 minutes or so. Otherwise, you don't see a lot of activity out there at the moment. Again, in the coming hours, we're expecting it to come together a bit more. Here's one computer representation, which I think is probably the closest to what we'll really see that action coming together. 9, 10 o'clock closer to San Antonio at that point. But again, our risk runs until about 2 a.m. for the severe weather. Cooler to the north where they've had some storms. Austin at 72 with outflow there. 79 in Fredericksburg, 87 here in San Antonio, Catula 92. As we get into tomorrow, our storm chances are very slim, about a 20% chance of a sprinkle or two in the morning, then into the afternoon, 20% chance. So by and large, mainly just mostly cloudy, some breaks in the clouds periodically, humid and mid 80s, low to mid 80s all weekend long, all the way through Memorial Day. Not too hot, but definitely very humid. Memorial Day, another chance of a few isolated pop up afternoon showers or storms. We're not expecting anything widespread at this time into next week. Back to work. Tuesday, better or higher storm chances at that point. We're expecting more uh, numerous showers and storms to kick in with uh, our shift in our weather pattern by next Tuesday. We're going to be right back with more. It is impossible to adequately summarize one man's 47 year career, but you can learn a lot about Paul Venema by talking to people who worked closely with him and there he left an indelible mark on KSAT. Absolutely. Here's a look at what some of our colleagues had to say about the icon, the legend, Paul Venema. Paul, oh, that day's finally come. It's something we've talked about a long time and you finally, finally did it. Congratulations. I just want to let you know how much I appreciated working with you over the years and how much I cherished the fun times we had, because I consider you more than a co-worker, I consider you a friend. Mr. Venema, what can I say? You've always been an inspiration to me. I was working with you one time about uh, somewhere between 12 and 15 years ago, and I said, you know, you've been here for a long time. When do you think you're gonna retire? And you said, retire? Retire from what? All I do is meet people and tell stories. That's an inspiration. Um, a lot of stories have come and gone about Paul Venema, and I would just like to take a moment and, and, and point something out other than a story, just more how impressed I am with the fact that Paul Venema has judges on speed dial. And those judges can call Paul. It's like me trying to get a hold of the Spurs. Doesn't happen, but it happens with, with Paul Venema. Just pick up the phone and call the judge. Paul had a special way of just throwing in a little charm. And when I found out he was the first El Rey Feo, I thought, wow. That's appropriate. This man is prince or king. I have so much enjoyed working with you for the past 12 years of my career at KSAT. You are the consummate professional, a gentleman, and a good guy who always brought a smile to my face. And I have to tell you, you have some of the best smelling cologne of anyone I've ever known. You are an institution, not only at this station, but in the city of San Antonio, Texas. Everybody knows who you are. You are loved, you are respected, and you are certainly going to be missed. You know, we're gonna miss you, my friend. We're gonna miss you, we're gonna miss you a lot. And what you've done for this station, this community, is immeasurable. You are like family, and I've always appreciated how much you do for us, how much you contribute to us, not just as a news organization, but as a person. You've been a great friend, you've been a marvelous storyteller, and you've been a mentor, I know, to a lot of people, whether they tell you that or not. And so it's going to be sad to not have you as part of our everyday news team, but you are always going to be part of our family.
Severe thunderstorm watch, meaning the potential exists for severe thunderstorms through 2 a.m. for pretty much the entire KSAT 12 viewing area. Right now, the activity is all north of us. We're expecting, and the anticipation is, for that the th storms you see to the north to come together and organize more and then drop southward through the evening. Of course, we'll be here and uh, we'll keep an eye on it and update you accordingly, especially on the KSAT 12 Weather Authority app where we have the capabilities of just streaming to you live right in the palm of your hand. So turn on notifications for that. Otherwise, tomorrow, maybe a sprinkle in the morning. Morning activity should be just fine. There's a little dampness left over and low clouds. And then some sunshine into the afternoon, 85, very humid all weekend long. And you see that slight chance of a shower or two Saturday afternoon and then again Monday afternoon on Memorial Day. Not a weekend washout, just a decent amount of clouds out there through your upcoming holiday weekend. Let's talk about next week. We're really holding off 90 degrees until about this time next week. A little bit of an active weather pattern, more storm chances, and I think they're going to be even higher storm chances than what we have out there right now and through the weekend. Tuesday, Wednesday, probably put another dent in the drought where we still have one. All right, thank you, Adam, and thanks so much for watching the 6 o'clock news. And thank you to Paul Venema for spending his last moments in KSAT with us. Have a great retirement, Paul. We'll see you at 10.